Hey you guys, welcome back to the channel Physics Surgery and here we are in the Pathfinder Solution Series and we are in the chapter of Momentum that is chapter 4 and objective 3, 21 and 22 all the three questions we'll be discussing which are based on an interesting little force called as drag force which are of many varieties but in these three problems we'll be looking at a uh, special case of this drag force where you could see on the screen it's F is equal to KV form. Okay, so let's start ahead with the formal wording of the question number three okay you want to give a pause here and try the questions out so i'll just give you a snapshot of these questions so here's the first one and then the second one is a comprehension as you could see there is a passage here followed by the two questions with options given so there's a diagram associated with this question so have a pause give it a fair try and then do come back for the question and the solution and also i'll be giving a practice problem based on this concept at the end of the uh, solution okay so let's move ahead so here we are with the problem number three a boy of mass 50 kg is standing at one end of a nine meter long boat of mass 100 kg that is floating motionless on a calm lake the man walks to the other end of the boat and stops there the boat also moves and finally stops due to water resistance a force of water resistance is proportional to velocity of boat relative to the water. What is the magnitude of the net displacement S of the boat? Okay, so let's move forward with the solution of this one first. So before I go ahead, I think in case you are uh, my viewers from the past three or four months, you would have seen that I have done a drag force problem from the kinematics chapter of Pathfinder, wherein uh, I gave a very uh, interesting solution where we avoided the integration and tried to solve that question. So in case you're new, I would like you to watch that video. The link is in the description below for this question or in the I button above. So please do watch it. Uh, the concept that I used there would be useful also here. Okay, so let's move forward. The third question, the boat and the man, first question that you need to have is that the usual fun, uh, fundamentals that we take of center of mass not moving is not applicable. Why is that so? As a person walks on the boat, right, there could be some forces between the person and the boat, like friction. Uh, you should realize that uh, to together M1 plus M2, that is a person plus the boat as a system, will have an external force. Imagine the boat moving backward, and therefore the K into velocity of boat, as he said, should be a drag force acting in the opposite direction, right, in this particular case. So minus suggests that it is in the backward direction. Okay, so the, the thing is that uh, F external, which is minus K into V times of the boat, whatever you are ending up getting, should be not equal to zero, right? So since the net external force is not zero, the center of mass of the boat plus man will not stay at rest. So this diagram, which is depicting the center of mass of man plus boat being at rest is not a correct one because of the forward force that you have due to the drag force, drag or the water resistance as he calls it. So F external is not equal to zero and this formula of M1 plus M2 into ACM will be used here. Okay, so let's move forward with that question. So I've drawn a very crude diagram of this uh, person or the boy as he calls it as small m and the capital M is the boat. Imagine the person is walking in the forward direction with Vm bar as his velocity vector and the velocity vector of boat, I know it would be in the backward direction, but uh, the depiction would take care of the sign of this thing. Okay, so this is V capital M bar. At any arbitrary instant, the free body diagram of the boat on the right side of your screen, you could see that it is pointing towards the left. Okay, so that's the idea that you're ending up having. So left or right, it would not matter because I have put a bar here. So in the previous diagram you would have seen, actually it would be a forward force. Okay, right. So this is the net external force that would be acting. So F external is M plus M into AM, right? Yeah. I am integrating both sides uh, over time. So this is called impulse momentum equation for the combined M plus M system. The beauty of this is that that F external, which is given as K into V M bar with the minus sign out, uh, since K is a constant, it can be brought out, right? So integral V M bar DT and M plus M also is a constant, it comes out, okay? Leaving a C M bar DT inside. So over a period of this time, kinematics teaches us that this expression is nothing but the displacement of capital M, which is the displacement of boat alone, right? So this is a capital M, so this is a capital M. Whereas the integration of ACM over time is nothing but the change in velocity of CM, right? Any kinematics, a integration of acceleration over time should give you change in velocity since it is a center of mass. So 
you should understand the question carefully that he says the boat and the man system starts at rest and the man stops and also waits for the boat to completely come to rest and that is when the displacement is being asked so initial to final conditions are the complete static states right that means both the masses are at rest so vcm finally also is zero and ucm is also zero according to the statement of the question so the right hand side nicely without any integration goes out to zero and therefore the displacement of boat interestingly and surprisingly and now satisfactorily comes out to be zero so let me go back to that question and mark the answer let's check out the options so here we are all right so the displacement has to be equal to zero which is slightly non-intuitive but i think now you'd have understood all this is happening because of the kv bar type of force when integrated gives you the displacement required so this part so with that confidence let's move forward to the second question which is a comprehension so i've written on the comprehension again here for your perusal a plank of mass 1.5 kg you could see is placed on a horizontal floor that is lubricated with oil top of the plank is in level with a platform as shown in the figure the force of viscous drag on the plank due to the layer of lubricating oil when the plank slides is given by f is equal to minus k v bar the same old force and the velocity v bar is of the plank and k is equal to 2 kg per second a small block of mass m 0.5 kg lands from the platform on the plank with a velocity of 10 meter per second and after sliding some distance on the plank the block stops on the plank okay right so with this information there are two questions that are going to follow so as i've shown at the start of the video so i hope you have given it to them a try and i am going ahead with the first question that he's asked this is the first question how far does the plank slide on the floor so he's not mentioned anything so we will wait for the plank to completely come to rest from the start till the end to find out what is this distance required okay right so let's move forward this is the second question which i'll attempt after solving the first one so how far does the plank slide so if i draw the free body diagrams of the plank and the block sliding on it at any arbitrary instant so vb represents on my picture here on the right the velocity of the block and vp represents the velocity of the plank masses are uh, masses are depicted in the diagram so since the plank is moving towards the right therefore the drag force from the oil below should be a kv in the backward direction okay right so um, this same net force equal to mass into acceleration of the system i am taking m plus m together as system therefore the friction force between them is an internal thing therefore will not appear in this equation as i have seen in the first question i have integrated both sides over time so this is an impulse momentum equation okay so again m plus m comes out the same old trick vp dt integration gives you sp which is the displacement okay and the right hand side the usual stuff the delta vcm comes because of the integration of acm over time this time delta vcm is not zero because the value of delta vcm as you could see on the sidelines finally it will come to rest everything both the block and plank will come to rest finally but initially for this system the block has entered with some velocity giving you an a, a center of mass velocity small m into the u of the block that it entered with divided by m plus m that i will substitute nicely here m plus m and m plus m get cancelled and you end up getting sp here would be mub divided by k okay all the minus signs also get cancelled so the value of that comes out to be 2.5 meters so the answer is option c in this particular question okay so let's move ahead with the graph question which is even more interesting so here's the question which of the following graphs best represents or describes the relation between the magnitude of frictional force f between the block and the plank with time t so this is not the drag force this is the frictional force between the block and plank this kind of force is also called as dry friction okay right so four options as you could see and you're supposed to choose the best one okay so let's move ahead with our analysis so i would say there are two stages with this particular event of block striding on the plank right so to be very clear here okay right and now i have uh, drawn the free body diagram separately last time i did not show this friction right so which was internal so uh, i would say since the block is moving faster than the 
plank, uh, the friction on the block would be backwards and the friction on the plank would be forward. Apart from that, there would be a drag force from the oil underneath in the same way that I've depicted in the previous question. The stage one is when these two have a relative sliding, okay? And that is when the friction would be kinetic in nature and the value of the kinetic friction is only one single value, which is mu into m into g, where m is mass of the block, okay? So this is the first stage. During that stage, the magnitude of this friction will remain constant, okay, right? Then stage two arrives when block and plank acquire a common velocity at that particular instant. And that common velocity will ensure that the friction is static in nature. And that value of static friction on this small m has to be small m into ACM because they are moving together, right? If they are moving together, acceleration of each block is acceleration of center of mass itself. Okay, right. So that's why I've written small m into ACM taking only free body diagram of small m. Okay, right. And this small m into ACM has to be proportional to the velocity of the plank. Why is this so? Acceleration of center of mass of this entire system is related to the external force acting on the system and which is nothing but the velocity of the plank. Okay, right, which means over a period of time from stage two start, uh, the velocity of plank obviously because of the drag force is going to reduce. Therefore, the value of this friction will fall with time. Okay, so you have to choose a graph in which the stage one, the frictional force is depicted as a constant and in stage two, it should decay over a period of time. Okay, so I have chosen graph D, but some of you will argue, let's go back to the question. In A is definitely wrong because there is no part of stage two, but there could be a chance with B, C and D. In all the three cases, you could see there is a decrease over a period of time after the starting of a constant force. Okay, so this stage one is common in all the three. So how did I choose op option D is what is going to be explained in the next slide. Okay, so let's move forward. So why option D over B and C's? Okay, so option D, what, what is the difference? It's trying to tell us that the end of the stage one to the stage two, there is abrupt fall in the value of that friction from kinetic value to whatever static value that you're getting, there is a fall that is happening, okay? So the speed of the plank VP keeps increasing in stage one that we all know, right? So in, since the plank was started with zero velocity in stage one, the plank's velocity will keep on increasing and block's velocity keep on decreasing. They will meet at a common velocity at the end of stage one. So the forward force on the plank in order to ensure, please understand, the plank will have a drag force. It has to fight the drag force so that the plank actually has a greater velocity, right? As the uh, acceleration has to be there so that the velocity keeps increasing towards, right? So look at the plank's free body diagram. The kinetic friction that is acting in stage one has to be greater than the value of the k v common right at the end I, why did i write greater than or equal to because it will be greater than initial velocities but once the v common occurs there could be a chance that these two are equal also in one of the special cases but usually it should be greater right once the v common has been reached at the end of stage one okay so in stage u to stage two initially whatever that v common velocity is there the value of fs suddenly becomes m into acm right? It has been depicted in the previous page. And what's the value of ACM or M into ACM? It has to be related to the value of the net external force divided by mass. Okay. ACM is net external force on the system, which is K into V of the plank, which is same as V of the common idea divided by M plus M. And you could see that there is a fraction here. And since mu mg is greater than KV common and FS has suddenly become a fraction of that, this has to be less than KV common. And out of the three graphs, that is B, C, and D, there's only D option, which depicts that fall that happens due to this fraction of M by M plus M. Okay, so I hope you understood and why the option D has been chosen. Now comes the uh, part where we take up the practice question. Okay, so here's the practice question on again a KV bar, as you could see, it's a question again from Pathfinder. Check your understanding, chapter four. So please try to use the concepts that I have taught either in the video that you have seen at the start Right. I asked you to see a video in the description and also the two questions that I've discussed. It's about the trick of that integration, integration of V dt, trying to give you directly the displacement. And there is some extra spice in this question in terms of collisions that you have to count. It's a very interesting question. And I think if you have followed this video carefully, you'll definitely ace this question. Okay, so I hope you have liked this video. If you want to check out the other Pathfinder Solutions series, uh, all link of the playlist and other series are in the description below or in the iButton 
button above. So please make sure you do enjoy those uh, playlists. Try to play three or four videos every day to uh, try to cover all the videos in case you are new. There are more than 130, 140 videos that I've produced. Each one of them definitely uh, uh, an informative, worthwhile experience for the physics lovers. Okay, so uh, please do like the video if you have reached this far and share it with your com. Um, companions and peers in WhatsApp and Telegram groups and help me get more subscribers to my channel. Uh, your love and support has ensured uh, and motivated me to bring the quality content that I am able to do so. And I'll promise you that I keep doing this in the future also. Okay, so stay safe and be back with my next video uh, pretty soon. Thank you and see you soon.